Hi everybody and welcome in. It's time for a special edition of the United Bank Playbook along with the Director of Athletics at West Virginia University, Shane Lyons, bringing you up to date with what's going on within the Mountaineer Athletic Department. All right, big day last weekend for the Mountaineers and the Mountaineer family as a whole for the very first time since last season. The gates were open at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Shane, how do you think it went? I think it went uh, extremely well, Tony. Um, it was great to have fans back in, in the stadium. Uh, it was long overdue. Obviously, we have, you know, the, the COVID virus is going around and, and we have some contingencies plans working through that. Uh, our marketing staff, our event management staff, I thought did a great job of planning it out, the social distancing. Fans did a great job of wearing their mask, uh, obviously, when uh, they weren't eating and drinking. We had a few incidents, but nothing major. Uh, you know, we, I think we learned some from some other institutions prior to us having fans. But all in all, it was a great weekend, great weather, uh, obviously ended up being a great win. Of course, we've got more home games coming up. So what is the plan right now as to expanding or do you hold put? What will be the indicators as to progressing? Yeah, again, this is uh, not just a, a decisions made in, in a vacuum th through athletics. There's a lot of people within the community that we have conversations with about what we can do from fan capacity standpoint. You know, looking towards the Kansas State game, you know, it'll be approximately that 25% again. Um, again, the social distancing, all the, the protocols that we had in place. And we'll continue to look, you know, as the season progresses. Unfortunately, you know, around our, our community and, and, you know, not only within our state, but even surrounding states, there's been a, a spike in COVID cases. So we have to keep an eye on that. But, you know, we continue to look at that, talk about it on a weekly basis and, and deal with the appropriate personnel to see if we can you know, move that needle up higher than the 25 percent as we move forward. Sure. So the next question goes over to basketball. Practice has begun. It won't be all that long before the Mountaineers get into action. What's the plan right now for the Coliseum? Well, it's really going through the same type of uh, discussions with uh, the local personnel. You know, I'm hopeful that we'll have between that 20, 25 percent in basketball as well. Um, again, you, you run a little bit different issues by having an indoor facility sure. as opposed to you know, having it outdoors. But those discussions have begun. Uh, hopefully within the next week or so, we'll have a better insight what basketball will look like. You know, I can tell you around the country, just dealing with some of the other Big 12 schools, uh, there's some capacity limits that's closer even to the 10%. So uh, I'm shooting for that 20, 25%, which will get us, you know, roughly 3,000 fans into the Coliseum. And hopefully, again, same thing that we can continue to, to grow that number throughout the season, you know, provide the, the virus uh, cooperates with us. Sure. And the virus obviously has thrown a major curve in regard to eligibility. You have advocated and were successful in granting an additional year of eligibility for winter sports athletes. So we're talking about basketball and, and the others. How do you handle rosters now in regard to like bat, men's basketball's 15 or 13 scholarships, women's basketball's 15 scholarships, and other sports have specific limits? Have you figured out that part of it now? No, we really haven't figured it out. Obviously, I've had some discussions with our fall sport coaches, and then I'll have the same discussions with our winter sport coaches to say, you know, now that we know how the rule is go going to apply, what does that look like for you as a coach in, in the future? You know, for a one-year grace period, those returning seniors or fifth-year eligibility, last year of eligibility uh, student-athletes will be able to return and not count towards the scholarship limits. It's really the back end of that, Tony, that we have to worry about. The incoming freshmen, you know, using basketball, for example, you know, how, how do you maintain that, that uh, 13 scholarships in the future, you know, with the, the uh, additional, you know, potentially the additional seniors returning back and then the incoming student athletes. You know, I, I have good faith that it's going to work itself out. Um, it's just a matter of it was the right call for our student athletes with all the uncertainty as we go into the, the fall and, and winter sports, uh, but we'll work it out on the back end. Money has been obviously at a premium uh, because of what has transpired and what has happened. There have been estimates as to how much money you will lose because things just aren't normal. Do you have an idea? What's the latest number that you're looking at at this point? Yeah, our latest number, it's not good. I mean, overall, from a revenue standpoint, we're looking, 
you know, right now. And again, this is on the assumption that we play all the basketball games and we're going to continue playing all the football yep. games. You know, that, that number is roughly about $25 million uh, in a deficit right now as we move forward. Um, you know, if we lose basketball games, which we have a contracted amount with, uh, you know, through the conference, the same thing with football games, that number can even go higher. So, you know, it's important for, for all of us, you know, to, to continue, you know, from our student athletes, our coaches, that, you know, we continue with this masking and social distance and keep our health so we can play, play the games as we move forward. And, you know, Tony, it goes back to what I said early in the season. You and I had, you know, private conversation about this. We, we knew going into this season it was going to be messy. And knowing that we were going to have postponement of games as we move forward. Um, you know, the narrative has kind of been disappointing in the last couple of weeks because I think some of the national media have talked about the number of games that have been postponed rather than the number of games that have been played. Um, and it's, it's roughly about 10% of the games have been postponed. And I think you're going to see that in basketball as well. Basketball, I think, is going to be a little bit more tricky, you know, as, you know if, you, if your team does, you know, have to postpone the, the number of games that may impact. So it, it's going to be a long, long year as we move forward. And, you know, again, we appreciate the support of the Mountaineer Nation, you know, in, in buying tickets and coming out and supporting our teams as much as they can. Yeah. Um, your point, I guess, is what you're saying is uh, glass half empty, glass half full. We could be sitting here, and let's face it, a lot of us thought when this was really raging in the off season that we, that we wouldn't play any football at all. And so every game is a huge plus. It is a huge plus. And, you know, I, I want to focus on the positive of it because you're right. You know, we could be sitting here not playing any games at all. And, and we, you know, we, we took a, a risk. We learned how to manage the risk. You know, as a conference, I think we've done a great job as we've moved forward to say, how do we manage this? Understanding that, you know, what's going to control us is the virus. Uh, we're not going to control it, but we've done a good job of managing it and, and playing football games. And, and I'm hopeful we're approaching the halfway point, and I'm, I'm hopeful the second half of the football season goes well. That'd be fantastic. Shane, appreciate the time. Thank you. Let's go Mountaineers. All right. And thanks for being with us here, our special edition of the United mm -hmm. Bank Playbook.